Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to Border City Rock Talk. You get great news, great interviews, great interviewees with sometimes a comedic touch. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, and comment below. So yeah! Before further ado, I bring to you from Babylon AD, Derek Davis. How you doing, Derek? Doing great, man. Doing great. Uh, the lot, you know what's kind of funny is um, I get a lot of press releases coming through um, my um, my email accounts from Michael Brandvold, um, Paris Records, um, all of them, and I've been seeing Babylon for I don't know. I, I think it's going on six months, just repeating, repeating, repeating. And I and I clicked on it because I know um, you know Van Gogh, the, the Bells. Like everybody knows that song. That's one of the classics from uh, you know you guys got together in '87. But I had to check out the new album, and it's kind of funny. I have to admit, I love the cover. Thank you. Because Thank it's 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 like a Spinal Tap cover <laughs> you remember spinal tap they had intravenous de milo uh i live spinal tap <laughs> oh there you go well you know what they have a movie coming out eh excuse me you know they have spinal tap 2 as being um is being um oh. yeah they have uh paul mccartney's in it but they have um harry Shearer, christopher guest michael mckeon um oh. i've known about this for a year and a half and they're filming it now and they have, I think Elton John makes a cameo in it, Paul McCartney. So, I mean, that's going to be a classic movie. And if you live uh, Spinal Tap, you're going to love it. Yeah, I, I lived Spinal Tap and I probably watched it about 100 times just to just see exactly what happened to them, happened to us. Easy, easy for sure. Eh? Um, now, the album came out my, uh, May 17th on Paris. So Tom Mathers, tell um, your uh, fans... Um, that haven't got it and by the way there's going to be a link below so everybody can go purchase it and uh purchase all the merch there's three there's three singles out tell them about that tell them about um, who's still in the band and tell them about your travel i know you have three shows coming up in california in september and then you guys going to the uk yeah the, U the uk is next year oh that's the okay i didn't look at that that must say 2025 okay mm -hmm. but so the album is uh is out now and uh I've I've listened to it. It's it definitely still has that same '80s kind of uh, a rock. But um, just describe to your fans um, why you um, you know released that and why you recorded it and um, kind of the songwriting process behind it. Uh, a few a few of the songs, first of all. Uh, well, you know, we'd been uh, talking, discussing, it and talking about it since uh, <clears throat> around the time COVID hit. And uh, we we had some demos made and everything like that right before COVID hit. And then uh, when that hit, we 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 all kind of uh, just took a back seat. And uh, especially here in California, the governor basically locked everything down. So <clears throat> we really didn't get together for another year or so, I guess. Um, yeah. And then we started demoing more stuff. And last year we put out a, a live album uh, to yeah. let our fans know that we're still in the game, that we're still around. And yeah. It was a way for us to uh, tell everybody that we were making a studio album. So uh, we worked on this studio album for about maybe six months or so, uh, along with some of the demos that we had, had done earlier. Right. Took, took what we felt uh, were the best out of about uh, 16 songs at the time that we had recorded demos. Yep. And, um, you know, the album has been doing great. Um, we were making videos for, probably almost every song on the album and we're uh, like I like you said we're uh, we're on single 3 now love is uh, sometimes love is hell just came out uh this week or last week I should say and uh we've got a couple more to go singles that are going to be released to radio um so we're going to be we're going to be you know we're touring we're we're playing out we just played the uh, Gatlinburg Monster on the Mountain festival on Saturday night Mm -hmm. with, uh, Jet and Tesla and a bunch of other bands. That was a that was a blast. Right, uh, right. Looking forward to playing some more festivals and everything. So the band is basically back in action. You know, it, uh, we took a long hi hiatus after our mm -hmm. last album that was released on Frontiers Records, uh, Revelation Highway, which was released in 2017. Yeah. So, you know, we're pretty excited. You guys, um, I mean, are you getting ready to start routing more tours? Are there like more shows, shows coming in to be booked, but obviously you can't, uh, um, you know, put them on yes. the website until the ink is dry, right? Exactly. So, yeah, we're getting a lot of offers right now. Um, and, you know, we've already got some dates solidified for next year that we haven't really announced to anybody because we're trying to 
make sure that everybody, you know, go sees a, sees the shows this year. Yeah. Uh, and at the same time, we're going to go back in the recording studio uh, in uh, October, November, December uh, to start working on the, the new album that we're that uh, we've been uh, doing some demos with and everything like that. So we're, we're pretty busy, you know. So what, what have you been doing like since uh, 2017, like a musician, uh, career musician? generally just doesn't hang up the guitar and uh, hang up the mic. They, you know, obviously have some side gigs going on there. I'm sure you weren't delivering newspapers. So what were you doing from 2017 on? Uh, well, um, I released a, what I'd call a soul slash rock album. Um, Revolutionary Soul. Um, oh, okay. And then I, I that was in 2018. Then I released a, a blues album, 2021, I guess it was uh blues rock album you know mm -hmm. so i've been staying bu busy and at the same time writing songs for babylon ad myself and a few other artists and producing a little a little bit for a couple different bands so uh, um i'm i'm continuously busy man i don't have enough freaking hours in the day to be honest with you i know what happened to you on monday you're stuck in traffic i hear i i don't was that a couple days ago or last monday no um it was monday monday um, i was a flight Oh, it was a flight delay or something. Oh, okay, you were okay. from Gatlinburg. That's right. Yeah, so I, I couldn't do an interview on Monday. I wasn't sure why it was even set up on Monday because I was flying all day long, all night long, too, matter of fact. Oh, yeah, to Coretta. So um, what's the scene in, in Gatlinburg? I mean, everybody would think of uh, country, right? It's pretty awesome, man, to be honest with you. It's like uh, an old town with a Las Vegas feel. That's the only way I can explain it to you there are 3600 people that live there that there was probably 50,000 people walking around the streets is that right yeah any day of the week it is pretty damn awesome man outside of nashville in tennessee i think it's the biggest attraction and then dollywood is about eight miles from there uh you know dolly parton's mm -hmm. little uh, little uh getaway crazy looking uh crazy looking town man it's pretty cool. We didn't really get to stop and hang out there, but uh, just driving through it was pretty awesome. Was there like scraps and fist fights going on with all those people walking across the locals' lawn? Uh, was it like what? Was there like fisticuffs and scraps from all the 55,000 oh, tourists no. walking across people's no. lawns? <laughs> no, man. There's, uh, like I said, there's only about 3,600 people that live there, so there's not a lot of lawns. You know, it's like the only oh. way I could say is... Uh, if you're down in the middle of Las Las Vegas, but it's an old town setting, you know, yeah. tons of restaurants, tons of bars, to places to hang out. We played the convention center there. There was probably about twelve thousand people. It was pretty awesome. Wow, and um, it's, it's kind of like when people think of country. Even now, when I hear of uh, musicians that I interview for the channel, which is mainly rock, they're all living up in Nashville. I mean, it's yeah. it's become the new. Uh, the new whiskey a go go corner, you know, with the it troubadour, is. and all the bands and all the all the musicians that live there are really super good. Really. That's what I'm. Yeah, who told who told me that? I think it was. Uh, I think it's um, oh geez, um, John Albany. He played guitar and he's got his own studio there, but he played guitar for a Canadian star, uh, Lee Aaron, and he had another band called Rabbit. But he told me, he goes, every musician on the street corner will blow you out of the water. The only difference yeah. is they just haven't got that. Uh, they didn't get lucky and get signed. But he says those musicians will blow Absolutely. you right out of the water. Absolutely correct. So you're getting ready to, um, you're hitting three shows in California. And you've got more in the books that you're going to be announcing. Um, just got to ask you a couple quick questions. Um I'd like to thank Michael for setting this up and Tom uh, Mathers, uh, obviously, you know, a legend in the industry. Um, where can people go to um, get the new album and, and make you richer by buying the merch? <laughs> well, you know, the go to place is Amazon. I mean, you yeah. go to Amazon and there it is. Oh, yeah. Site babylonad.band.com, or you can go to Paris Records and order it direct from Tom. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's everywhere, digital or. Uh, or, or, you know, and get a hard copy. And we have actually have an album coming out too. Uh, of the, you know, we, it takes a long time to get those printed up. I didn't realize how long it takes 
to get those printed up because I guess everybody's doing albums now. That's but, yeah. And yeah. videos. Like me? People, videos too. Like you were saying earlier with your videos, people are going back to the old school, like MTV, much music style videos where the musicians are actually acting for a while. It was a lot of um, anime, but now yeah. it's going back to um, you know, the musicians are in the videos. The yeah. LPs are um, getting printed because, you know, I've heard digital, you know, all my life, but I remember back in the day, if you had an expensive uh, record needle, I mean, and great speakers, it's almost like being live. It's almost better than digital. Yeah, absolutely. It's better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a good way of putting it. And you hear that nice crackling romantic sound, you know? <laughs> and then you hear the skipping when your roommate, uh, you know, comes in and is drunk and knocks over your turntable. You don't forget that. <laughs> yeah. So I just got a couple of cliche questions for you, Derek. I know you're busy with your interviews. Um, what's the opposite of unsubscribe? What is the what? What's the opposite of unsubscribe? What is the opposite of unsubscribe? Well, subscribe, right? <laughs> <laughs> Do as Derek says and subscribe to the channel for these great interviews. And um, oh, I wanted to ask you something, and it's uh it's on the tip of my tongue. But oh, Babylon AD, how many people that you know know about you ask you how it was to be in that movie? Uh, you mean the kid goes wild? Or are you talking about the movie Babylon AD? No, the movie, the movie. How many people that know of Babylon AD and then somebody says, yeah, this guy's in Babylon AD. They're like, wow, I saw that movie 20 times. And you have to explain, no, no, I'm in the band. Oh, uh, that really doesn't, I don't, I'm not sure if that really happens hardly at all. The people that know us for a movie is kid goes wild. You know, it was yeah. a noble, you know, that's right. That's right. I read that. That's right. For sure. Mm -hmm. Um, Last question for you, my friend. <clears throat> um, this interview is going out from right on the border with Michigan and Ontario. Like I'm right on, the, I can look over there and see uh, Michigan. Um, favorite Canadian band or artist, uh, past, present, or I guess you can't say future, but. Maybe Heart, Triumph, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I think people, yeah, that's right. You, you're very right. I love Triumph, by the way, Rick Emmett and, those, and, um, and Mike and uh, Gil. But uh, yeah, a lot of people, um, are not sure. Like Hart, I think they made their big break in Washington State, but they were born in Canada. Yeah, I think uh, I think Neil Young spent a lot of time up in, in Canada too. Well, he he did. Of Springfield he, and stuff, right? Yeah. Well, he left. <laughs> he is yeah, a but Canadian. Yeah, you know. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, actually, just a question here. You ever, um, I, I like to say this uh, because I've only had a couple interviews since the passing of Jack Russell. Um. Um, rest in peace. Did you have the pleasure of meeting Jack back in the day? Yeah. Uh, uh, actually, we played with those guys a couple of times about maybe four or five years ago. And oh, yeah, wow. he was a really cool cat. You know, he's a cool dude. Um, very, uh, seemed a lot happy. And, you know, I, I, you know, I didn't really know him, but I mean, we met him backstage and hung out a little bit and had a beer and bullshit a little bit, that kind of thing. Right on. Yeah, he was, uh, I, I talked to him twice and he always seemed to me to be just a gentle soul, like peaceful. And yeah. um, what he went through, yeah, I can, unfortunately. I can, see, I can see I can see that, yeah. Right on. Okay, so do you have anything to say to your fans worldwide? There's probably going to be about uh, 6 million views tonight on, on this. No, I mean, but we're going to have a few. Do you have anything to Wouldn't say to your be fans? Nice? <laughs> it would be nice. Uh, well, you know, I just thought uh, we're, we're really thankful that we have the fans that we have. Even when we played last week, we were pretty much, we're pretty blown away how many people are from different parts of the country that just flew out. And they would tell us after the show just to see us, even though there's Tesla and, you know, there's Joan Jett and Slaughter and, but uh, you know, cause we don't play out that much, you know, it's not yeah. like we're on tour all the time. So a lot of people flew in from different parts of the country's country to see us. And that's always appreciated by the band. It's pretty cool. Anytime we play Los, Los Angeles or like the whiskey or something like that, there's always people that fly in from different countries, even. So wow. it's, it's, yeah, it's pretty crazy, but uh, you know, our, our fans are, it's, it's pretty cool that they've stayed with us all these years, you know? And when we made this album, we made a conscious effort to try to sound as much like our first album that we could yeah. in the sense of production wise and things like that, you know, so that, 
so that our, our fans that appreciated songs like Hammer Swing Down, Kid Goes Wild, Desperate, Bangle the Bells, things like that, would still be able to say, wow, that's Babylon AD, without yeah. saying, who's that band? You know, because sometimes you'll you'll hear the same band 20 years later and you'll say, well, that really doesn't sound like them, man, you know? <clears throat> well, a lot, a lot goes into um, um, people, I shouldn't say these days, but a lot of bands get caught up in the overtech, overproduced. And then tell, yeah. tell everybody who produced this album. <laughs> There's right uh, maybe maybe it was somebody else that mixed it that had a motley crew kind of um history in it. I read, I don't know. Um uh well the um the the uh the mastering was done by David Donnelly. He's he's done Motley Crew, he's done everything. Okay, that, that's what I read. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, and see he's he's a big time. You give it to him if you want your record to sound fat and you know a little bit more cleaner and you know professional. Exactly. Well, I'd like to thank you for your time. I'm glad we got to do this. Unfortunately, Monday you're um, stuck on an airplane. But the funny thing was, I messaged Michael and I said, I'm not going to, can we reschedule? Because I, I messaged Michael on your behalf and said, is there any chance we could reschedule this? Because I had something going on Monday. And I had, I didn't know. He'd sent me a, an email about an hour earlier asking me to request. So I thought this was beautiful. I feel uh, guilty. <laughs> well, so. that's cool. It worked out for a reason. All right, man. Well, thanks for your time. I'll uh, get this uh, edited and uploaded probably by tomorrow night, and right. I'll uh, I'll get it uh, to Mike, and uh, he can send it to you. And if you can share it for me, that'd be great. Awesome. Okay. Thank you very much, man. Good talking to you. Thanks, Derek.